All right, everyone. How's it going? The castle here. Getting ready to explain some stuff. All right, so, um... You remember that hierarchical instancing thing that I was talking about yesterday? Want to see it in action? Well, here it is. Uh, I have about 80% of the functionality in place. There, there's one last thing that needs to happen in order for me to uh, make it fully functional, but what I'll do is I'll talk about exactly what I have working right now, what I'll have working probably about tomorrow, in which case I'll be putting up a pretty significant patch to the level editor um, probably tomorrow, depending on how things roll out. Now, the problems I need to solve and the things that are going on right now, not super complicated, but uh, a little bit tedious. It's, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. All right, so now I'm in editor mode. You'll notice if I fly over here, check this out. So you see how like this is an object, right? So this is the first instance that I created, right? This instance is actually, if you look in the uh, maps folder, this is the center pillar prefab, right? And this is actually a separate level that I can just load. So check this out. Uh, if I go into it, load this and I can be like yo dog you got a level in your level right so it loads it up and hey look it's a level file where it's just this object right now you'll notice that there was another thing that was sitting next to it right now the next thing that was the other thing that was sitting next to it is this object So, if I go into the volumes mode, actually, uh, I might reorganize things because the volumes mode thing might not be as streamlined as possible. Maybe it would actually make sense to have, like, you know, uh, a couple more buttons for, like, prefabs and mass selection or whatever um, up, up here or something like that, or maybe down here. Um, but you'll see that this is, this is actually an object that I can drag and move around, right? So this is that instance that we just looked at that was in the other level, right? And now I can drag it, I can move it around. Now, notice that this is also a level where I can go around, I can select everything, I can, I can change settings on, on all of the objects, and let's say I wanna make this guy difficulty two, you know, stuff like that, right? Actually, that example won't work yet because of the last tiny bit of functionality that I need to get in place. So, um, all right. Actually, yeah, yeah, actually it does work. It works fine now. Um, it should be, yep, totally, totally legit. So, uh, I go ahead and I save this, right? Anything that I do to this level right now. So like if I add, um, let me add a little arch thingy on one of the sides, right? And then if I'm going to do the arch thingy there, Right, so now there's an arch thingy on one of the sides, right? And one of the one of the characters has his level set up a little bit differently, right? Okay, so uh, I go ahead, I, I saved it, right? And uh, now let's go into the actual level where I had these objects placed. So. What hierarchical instancing allows you to do is it allows you to build levels using small chunks of other levels and you can put those chunks inside of chunks inside of chunks inside of chunks and then you could essentially instance the fuck out of everything that you do to a point of insanity, right? So let's see, um, did it not save? Oh, that's right, because this is the original instance, so the this guy over here will be the one that has the arch thingy up here. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain why this right here, because this is the actual original object. So there's uh, there's a there's two there's two different ways that this is gonna work, and I, I have actually quite a bit to explain on why um, this is like that. But you'll notice in this, this one is actually changed now. So if I go into this, you'll see difficulty two, and there's the arch thingy up there. But you notice if I go to select the object. It acts as though it's locked because you can't really modify something that's in a prefab. I don't want people actually trying to modify stuff that's in a prefab. 
actually. I don't want you to do anything to these objects because they're in the prefab. Any work that you do right now is not going to be saved. The only way to modify the prefab is to go into the prefab itself and modify the prefab, which brings, you know, uh, which is one of the reasons, you know, one of the reasons why I need additional functionality that I'll be working on tonight. But you could see that, you know, all this stuff is here, right? But you also notice another thing too. Look at how this is, this whole area is like rotated on a weird axis. So this object right here is the object that is pointing that that is pointing to the uh, name of the room, right? And I also just noticed that inside of this, yeah, there's the there's the prefab version right there where you shouldn't be able to change anything and stuff like that. So th there's still some loose ends right here, but um, if you look at it correctly right there, it says load instance, right? So that's the in that's the object right there. So let me go in into this and go to prefab and volumes. And I go, I place a prefab point. Now a prefab point is nothing more just a, than just a point in space that loads another level. So first, a zero, 01, and then I load the instance, and then now I have another one of these sitting over here, right? But inside of this is, an, is another prefab. There's a prefab. This middle pillar piece here is also a prefab that's sitting inside of this other prefab. So you could do all kinds of crazy shit with this, and you can save billions of hours. Mil million. One billion hours of effort can be saved in terms of level design. But not just that, it allows you to do stuff like where you can build on axes that weren't even really possible before. You know, in, in, in uh, Call of Duty Radiant, okay, Call of Duty Radiant, uh, when I worked on the first Black Ops, it had full, it, you know, that Call of Duty Radiant has a form of what's called hierarchical instancing. They have the ability to put prefabs inside of prefabs, and then people can be working on, you know, you can hand this prefab off to somebody, and that person can be working independently, and everything like that. The major difference with my editor versus what they're doing is that, and they're still doing this now, uh, is that uh, uh, my editor is multiplayer, so we could all be working together at the same time so it doesn't really it's not really necessary in order for you know multiple people to be working on the same level for them to you know to, to hand out the prefabs although my system can totally do that it has it, it's basically you know it has its cake and eats, it eats it too but one of the major advantages if you look at something like quake 3 or call of duty um, radiant they're still building the, the world with brushes. But you'll notice that if you look at most Call of Duty maps, they actually have areas that are kind of like at weird angles and stuff like that that you really can't build with brushes. Well, how they do that is that they instance the object off and, they, and then they give it a, a weird rotation. That way, you can you could get a, around that limitation. But then once you go in to actually modify the level file, you can you're building on the grid again. You can build how you need to on the grid again. So this editor, in spite of the fact that I'm placing, you know, uh, essentially like, you know, square wall pieces everywhere for the vast majority of the of the world, I'm still able to build on a finer detail grid than even Unreal itself, I mean, well, Unreal, Unreal's editor is pretty good. It can do, you, you know, you can actually rotate and, and use a local rotation for building stuff. That is pretty handy, actually. I don't want to go that far, but, like, most level editors don't have this. Most level editors don't have a hierarchical instancing system in place where you can, where you can rotate the entire level, you know, by a certain amount. Or you can make a building and then you can rotate it slightly so that... Two buildings that are sitting next to each other, one of them can be slightly this way and one of them can be kind of even even leaning a little bit, like a leaning tower or something like that. And, you, and But when you're actually working on it, it's still on the grid. It all lines up. It's all it, 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 it all does what it needs to do. So let's take in this particular case right here. Uh, say, yeah, look, I'm rotating the whole fucking thing. I'm rotating it. Right, so like I can now have things where it's like a big chunk of the level was destroyed, so part of the building is like collapsed over, and now I've got this thing. But but I don't have to worry about giving up on anything. 
the moment that, you know, like I start rotating it, and most of the time if you rotate like this, none of this shit will ever line up ever again. But with hierarchical instancing, you don't have to deal with that shit. You can actually build on the grid and still rotate stuff and get things in weird angles that you were never really able to do normally. Because it just, it's all set up. Just using these instances. So, okay. So in this particular case, not only are you saving time, you get additional functionality. You get the ability to hand out chunks of the map to other people so that they can work on it on their own, you know, without having to, to directly work with you. Plus, I've got multiplayer now. So you can actually, I, well, I've already had multiplayer. I built it from the ground up with that. So now it's actually possible for like five of your friends to actually be fucking building this shit all, all at the same time. So that's the, um, you know, so what we're looking at right now is the uh, hierarchical instancing, the, uh, the, 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 the prefab point. The prefab point in space is the point in which you actually place the object. And you can actually use the different instances that you create. What I'm working on next is the ability to work with something else that's going to be called a prefab volume. Okay, so now you're working with five of your friends in the level and you don't want to have to just jump off to another map where they can't even really follow you unless you make another server and everything becomes awkward as fuck because you're just wanting to try and work together on one map. So here's how this is going to work where you don't actually have to do that. If you look at this chunk of level, this is not a prefab. You see how it's, you know, it gives you the ability to lock each and every one of these things. But if you look at the volume itself that um, that is surrounding it right now, this volume is the level, and the center of this volume is zero 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 in world space within that particular case. So what you do is you name it, you give it a name, and then you can save the prefab, or or you can grab this and chunk it over to like another location, right? And then you can load the prefab. Now, this is the stuff that isn't working yet. If you load the prefab, it loads it as an, if you load it like this, it's not actually a prefab. It's a whole bunch of separate objects that you can manipulate and do anything you want. When you click save, it'll save over whatever the name of the prefab is. And thus, you can work on the prefabs without having to go to a different world. And you and your five friends can work together at the same time on prefabs, making new prefabs, and then placing the prefabs. You never actually need to leave the world space. You can all hang out together and build these prefabs at the same time. And all you need to do is, yeah, all you need to do is give this a name and put objects inside of it and then save it. And you're golden. That's it. That's all you need to do. Once I get this in place, then the prefab system will be fully functional. It allows you to do a fucking lot a lot okay so basically at one at some point what will happen is you take this object and you place it so that it fully encompasses the uh, this object here right and then when I click save it grabs all of the objects that are in, sitting inside of it right all the walls floors ceilings everything like that and then it um, saves it to that prefab which is then a separate map which then I can I, which then at that point I can uh, I can just you, you know it'll update these at the same time so that means that if I make one change to this uh, uh, area if I like if I decide to put like you know uh, you know a, a, a door here or fucking maybe get rid of this wall or something like that right if I decide to do that here and then I fly outside of it go into volume mode and I click save prefab all of these other uh, objects that are uh, floating over here will update and they will have those changes made to them in real time with all five of your friends just hanging out watching I didn't think I was going to get something like this, not, especially not this quickly. This is the most powerful tool in level design. I've got a lot of experience with level design. If you can get a form of hierarchical instancing into your level editor, 
you have at your fingertips something that is so profoundly powerful that it allows you to save so much time and gives you so much more options in terms of creative, you know, being able to be creative and building all kinds of crazy shit and, and, and just a, a development pipeline that just absolutely tar like trashes anything else that's out there. Most of most modern level development tools don't have this, but it's the, it's paramount. It's one of the best features, period, hands down, hands down. Here it is, and it seems to be working right now. So, uh, yeah, how about that? How about that? All right, so, uh, yeah, now that I got this, I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the rest of this in a functional state. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to getting this done. Oh, yeah, I also got other stuff, too. Uh, the name tags are working correctly now, I think. Um, now, you'll, everyone who starts when they join will start at the player start entity rather than the... Uh, you know, rather than at zero zero zero, um, uh, I'll have a bunch of like tweaks and stuff like that. But I'm going to be working on a lot of art after I get this in place because I want to start getting walls, floors, ceilings that actually look like, you know, actual things like you know, uh, you know, like metal girding and fucking like cool ass shit. So, uh, yeah. Uh, once I just get this in place, then, yep. Uh, it's going to be mostly just art and tweaking and, you know, just getting things in place. Yeah, I'm, all right, I'm repeating myself. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end the video here. But, uh, yeah, yeah, hierarchical instancing is my bitch now. I didn't think I was going to make it my bitch, but it's my bitch now. Oh, well. <laughs>